Hello and welcome to the second of these, our Lent lectures on saints and martyrs of the 20th century. Last week, Father John introduced us to St Oscar Romero, and today I'm going to tell you about a saint close to my own heart, St Maria Goretti. The shrine of St Maria can be found in uh, a small town called Naturno on the coast of Italy near Rome and there her body lays, visited by pilgrims. And it was on St Maria Goretti's feast day that I was ordained to the priesthood in the church, and so she has a close place to my heart. St Maria Goretti was born on the 16th of October 1890 in Corinaldo in the Ancona province in Italy. Her farm worker father moved his family to Feria di Conca near Anzio. When he died of malaria as a result of a mosquito bite, Maria's mother had to struggle to feed her children. Maria's mother kept her brothers and sisters working in the fields and Maria stayed at home cooking and sewing and cleaning the house and watching her younger sister, Teresa. Though the family's circumstances were extremely difficult, they were a very close family who loved God. Maria was faithful in saying her prayers and going to Mass and making her confession. On the 5th of July 1902, Maria was sitting outside the steps of her home sewing. Her 18-year-old brother or neighbour, it is unclear which, Alessandro's shirt, while he threshed beans in the barnyard. As she concentrated on her sewing, Alessandro surprised her and grabbed her from the steps. When he tried to rape her, Maria cried that it was a mortal sin and warned that he would go to hell. When Alessandro persisted, she fought him and screamed, No, it is a sin. God does not want it. At her words, Alessandro began to choke her, and she said that she would rather die than submit. Upon hearing her words, Alessandro pulled out a knife and stabbed her eleven times. When she attempted to reach the door, he stabbed her three more times and then fled. Maria's young sister Teresa woke to the sound of her sister's cries and began to cry. Maria's family returned from working in the fields and found her bleeding on the floor. They quickly took her to the nearest hospital in Naturno, where she underwent surgery without anaesthesia. Unfortunately, her wounds were beyond the surgeon's ability to help. Halfway through the surgery, the surgeon asked, Maria, think of me in paradise. As she lay on the table, she looked up at him and said, well, who knows which of us is going to be there first. She did not realise how terrible her situation was, and the surgeon replied, it will be you, Maria. Maria replied to him, that I will think gladly of you. She also mentioned concerns for her mother. The next day on her sickbed, Maria forgave Alessandro and said that she wanted to see him in heaven with her. She died that day while looking upon an image of the Virgin and holding a cross to her chest. Shortly after Maria's family discovered her, Alessandro was captured and questioned. He admitted that Maria had been assaulted by him, but not raped by him, as she had resisted. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He also admitted that he'd attempted to persuade her to accompany him to bed on several occasions in the past, and had attempted to rape her before. Alessandro remained unrepentant for his actions until he had a dream, whilst in prison, that he was in a garden. Maria was there, and gave him lilies, which immediately burned in his hands. When he woke, he was a changed man. He repented his crime and lived a reformed life. When he was released, 27 years later, he went directly to Maria's mother and begged for her forgiveness, which she gave, saying, If my daughter can forgive him, who am I to withhold forgiveness? St Maria Goretti was beatified by Pope Pius XII in a ceremony in St Peter's Basilica on April the 27th, 1947. 
Three years later, on the 24th of June 1950, Maria was declared a saint and Alessandro, her attacker, was present in St. Peter's Square in the crowd to celebrate her canonization. He later went on to become a lay brother of the Order of the Friars Minor Capuchin, where he lived in a monastery and worked as its receptionist and gardener until his death. Maria's own mother was also present at her beatification. St. Maria is called a martyr because she fought against Alessandro's attempts at sexual sin. However, the most important aspect of her story is how she forgave her attacker, her concern for her enemy extending even beyond death, and the miracle of her forgiveness in his life. She truly lived up to those words of Christ from the cross that all would be forgiven. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. St Maria's body can be found in the crypt of the Basilica of Nostra Signore delle Grazie in Neturno, the shrine of Our Lady of Grace. Her body there is visited by families, by many pilgrims, who pray that they may have that same forgiving love. Alessandro would write of uh, his interaction with St Mary Goretti, saying, Maria's forgiveness saved me. Alessandro was born into a family well acquainted with poverty. Shortly after he was born, his own mother attempted to drown him. Several months later, while in a mental asylum, she herself died. His brother would also be subsequently interned in an asylum where he also died. Alessandro's father, Giovanni, was an alcoholic who struggled to provide for his children. He moved the family multiple times trying to earn a living as a manual labourer. Unfortunately, his alcoholism prevented his holding down a job for very long. It was while endeavouring as a sharecropper that he met Luigi Goretti, father of St Maria Goretti, both families living in poverty. It was decided that they would partner together and attempt to work as a team for those hiring sharecroppers. Both men eventually decided to move their families to the small town of Le Fiere di Conca near Neturno. By this time, Giovanni Serenelli had only his son Alessandro living with him. Within two years, Alessandro was 18 years old, living in the same house as the Goretti's, provided to them by the Count Masolini. Maria's father, of course, by then, as we know, had died of malaria and Alessandro's own father was increasingly gripped by alcoholism. Alessandro became more and more reclusive and withdrawn. Most alarming, however, was the lust towards Maria that was being cultivated in his heart. At first, Alessandro would simply make lewd jokes and gestures towards Maria, and then these, as we've heard, eventually led to attempts to seduce her. After Alessandro was sentenced to prison for his attack, he tried to blame Maria uh, for her own death, claiming that she herself instigated the uh, attack. In prison, he was locked in isolation and his anger would lead to outbursts of physical violence against inmates. It was only after the appearance of Maria to Alessandro that he changed. He was filled, we're told, with the light and love of the Holy Spirit, that light and love that comes through forgiveness, and he immediately became contrite. When he moved to the Capuchin Fathers to work with them, he wrote a letter nearing his death to explain uh, his views and his desire for forgiveness. And here is the text of that letter. I am now almost 80 years old. I am close to the end of my days. Looking back at my past, I recognise that in my early youth I followed a false road, an evil path that led to my ruin. 
through the content of printed magazines, immoral shows and bad examples in the media, I saw the majority of young people of my day following evil without even thinking twice. Unworried, I did the same thing. There were faithful and practising Christian believers around me, but I paid no attention to them. I was blinded by the brute impulse that pushed me down the wrong way of living. At the age of 20, I committed a crime of passion, the memory of which still horrifies me today. Maria Goretti, now a saint, was my good angel whom God placed in my path to save me. Her words, both of rebuke and forgiveness, are still imprinted in my heart. She prayed for me, interceding for her killer. Thirty years in prison followed. If I had not been a minor in Italian law, I would have been sentenced to life in prison. Nevertheless, I accepted the sentence I received as something I deserved. Resigned, I atoned for my sin. Little Maria was truly my light, my protectress, with her help, I served those 27 years in prison well. When society accepted me back among its members, I tried to live honestly. With angelic charity, the sons of St. Francis, the minor Capuchins of the Marches, welcomed me among them not as a servant, but as a brother. I have lived with them for 24 years. Now I look serenely to the time in which I will be admitted to the vision of God, to embrace my dear ones once again, and be close to my guardian angel, Maria Goretti, and her dear mother, Assunta. May all who read this letter of mine desire to follow the blessed teaching of avoiding evil and following the good. May all who believe that with faith of the little children that religion with its precepts is not something that one can do without. Rather, it is true comfort and the only way in all of life, even the most painful. Peace and all good. Alessandro Serenelli. So in those two accounts of uh, St Maria Goretti and of her attacker Alessandro, we see the power of forgiveness that St Maria Goretti, even having been killed by Alessandro, is able to intercede for him and to forgive him, to be a true bringer of God's mercy and reconciliation. St John Paul II wrote, Those who are acquainted with little Maria said on the day of her funeral, a saint has died. The devotion to her has continued to spread on every continent, giving rise to admiration and a thirst for God everywhere. In Maria Goretti shines out the radical choice of the Gospel, unhindered, indeed strengthened, by the inevitable sacrifice that faithful adherence to Christ demands. the radical choice of the gospel, the radical choice to forgive, the radical choice to forgive those who would do us harm, those who have harmed us, and to pray to God for them. Alessandro was able to understand God's forgiveness because of the gift that Maria Goretti gave by her forgiveness to him. What power forgiveness has what power forgiving someone has. It can transform their lives and allow them to be reconciled with God. To forgive is an act of mercy that comes from God, from the soul of the Christian. And it is our call to forgive as well. Because we know that as sinners we need God's forgiveness. We need God's mercy in our lives. Writing about the year of mercy Pope Francis writes, pardoning offences becomes the clearest expression of merciful love, and for us Christians it is an imperative from which we cannot excuse ourselves. At times how hard it seems to forgive, and yet pardon is the instrument placed into our fragile hands to attain serenity of heart. Pope Francis really does write uh, to us all there, how hard it can be to forgive, and yet forgiveness is what is placed into our hands to offer to other people. Forgiveness is given to us to offer to others, because we too are forgiven our sins by God. So in this Lenten season, 
I'd like to encourage us to think about the ways in which we might need to forgive other people, in the ways in which we are burdened by a holding on to things that have happened in our lives. That if we could but forgive or ask for forgiveness, how situations would improve, how lives would be transformed, and how we might be able to dwell together more fully as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Pope Francis reminds us that the call to forgiveness is not easy, it's not always simple, but it is what Jesus calls us to do. We must remember that Jesus on the cross forgives those who've done it harm, forgives the penitent thief, uh, forgives all around him, and dies for our sins, dies that we might be forgiven too. And so that's a powerful message for us to carry through this Lent, the need and the desire for forgiveness. So just end with the collect of St Maria Goretti. Let us pray. Heroic and angelic St Maria Goretti, we kneel before you to honour your preserving fortitude and to beg your gracious aid. Teach us a deep love for the precepts of our Holy Church. Help us to see in them the very voice of our Father in Heaven. May we preserve without stain our white baptismal robe of innocence. May we who have lost this innocence kneel humbly in holy penance and with the absolution of the priest, may the torrent of Christ's precious blood flow into our souls and give us courage to carry the burning light of God's love through the dangerous highways of this life until Christ our King shall call us to the courts of heaven. Amen. And may St Maria Goretti and all the saints pray for you, and may God grant each one of us a forgiving heart, able to show God's charity, love and mercy to the world. Amen.